Hi, I'm Diane Cometa, and today on Dishing with Di, I'm going to show you how to make carrot cake. Moist and loaded with flavor and texture, topped with delicious cream cheese frosting. And it's simple to make. So let's get started on Dishing with Di. Start by peeling some carrots and then use a box grater and grate the carrots over the large holes. Then dump the whole thing into a bowl and set that aside. Then get two 9 by 2 inch cake pans and grease those with some butter or nonstick spray and then line the bottoms with some parchment paper and then grease the parchment paper. Then you're going to go ahead and add in some flour and just shake that around and coat the bottom and the sides of the pans. And then just set those aside. Now get some golden raisins and put them in a bowl covered with water, pop it in the microwave for a minute, then let them soak for about 10 minutes, drain them, and pat them dry. It makes them really plump and juicy and I really love the golden raisins more than the dark ones. Now get your flour, pour it into a measuring cup, and then level it off with the back of the knife. This way the flour doesn't pack down. Then dump that into a bowl along with your leavening, which is gonna be some baking soda. Then add in some salt and to spice things up, some ground cinnamon and some ground nutmeg. I love the combination of cinnamon and nutmeg. This is gonna taste really delicious. Then grab yourself a whisk and just combine that thoroughly and then set the whole thing aside. Then in the bowl of a mixer, add some canola or vegetable oil and some white granulated sugar. This is gonna make it moist and sweet. And then for flavor, add some pure vanilla extract and just mix that around. Then comes my secret weapon, some applesauce. This is gonna make the cake moist, but it's gonna add lots of flavor. And trust me, it's really delicious. So mix that around. And if you have a stand mixer, you're gonna have to scrape the sides and the bottom because everything always lays down there. Why can't they fix that? So then mix that through and then crack some room temperature eggs into a bowl, or I just use the cup I measured the oil in, less clean up that way. And then just whisk those around to get them beaten a little bit, and then turn the mixer on and slowly pour the eggs in. And then you're gonna turn the mixer up to medium high and beat that for about three minutes till it's pale yellow. Give the bowl a scrape to make sure everything's mixing through. So go ahead and get that done and get down in the bottom there. And then add in your dry ingredients with the mixer on low. This couldn't be easier. You don't wanna over mix here. Just mix it until the flour disappears. I stop kind of early and I just go ahead and you know mix it a little there. And then I grab my spatula and just kind of do the rest because you don't wanna make this cake tough. And then grab your carrots and add some chopped walnuts. They add great texture and a nice earthy flavor. And then your plump, golden, juicy raisins. And then get your hands in there and mix that around. And then take the carrot mixture and just dump it into the batter and fold it in with a large spatula. Just don't mix it real hard. You wanna do a gentle mix and then pour that thick and luxurious batter into your prepared pans. Look at that. Now bake them in a preheated 350 degree Fahrenheit oven on the center rack for 35 to 40 minutes or until a tester inserted into the center comes out clean or you touch the top gently and it springs back. Then place them on a rack to cool for five minutes and then run a knife around the edge to make sure nothing has stuck and then turn them out onto the rack to cool completely while you make your cream cheese frosting. So throw some softened cream cheese into your mixing bowl, whiz that around with the mixer to smooth it out, and then throw in some softened butter and some pure vanilla extract, and then just mix that around, scrape it once in a while, but get it nice and smooth, and then add in some confectioner sugar, otherwise known as icing or powdered sugar, and then mix that until it's luxuriously creamy and smooth. 
Once the cakes are cooled, you can frost them right away or you can wrap them in some plastic wrap, pop them in your fridge, or you can put them in your freezer for up to two months. Now, what I like to do before I frost them is to first take off the parchment paper off the bottom and then put a little dab of my cream cheese frosting on top of my serving dish and then turn my cake onto that. The cream cheese frosting kind of stabilizes the cake so it doesn't slide all over the place. Now, put some parchment paper or wax paper in strips right around the edge of the cake. It keeps it nice and clean this way and then you don't have a messy plate. Now, take some of the frosting, put that in the center of that cake, slather that all over, but don't go to the very edge, and then take the other cake, pull the parchment paper off, put that on top of the first layer, and then go about frosting the cake. Just get a nice thin layer on there first, because sometimes some of the crumbs from the cake will mix in with the frosting. What I usually do is take the cake and pop it into the fridge for about 15 to 30 minutes, just so that frosting can get a little bit firm. And then I go and take the rest of the frosting and I like slather that all over the cake. Now sometimes I'll just take a little spatula and I'll make some little designs right around the side and on the top of the cake, or I get some of the walnuts and I just take those and I kind of pat those in to the sides of the cake, right around the bottom half of the cake. And you just kind of press those in a bit so they stick. You can even do a little piping if you want it to look special. Now you wanna just go around and carefully remove that paper from the sides of the cake and now you're ready to serve. Slice into that beautiful cake, grab your fork and just dive in. And you are gonna go straight to carrot cake heaven and I'm gonna be right next to you. Mmm. You are gonna love it. It looks beautiful, it tastes great and it's easy to make. The recipe is on my website, dishingwithdye.com, and I hope I made your life a little easier, more enjoyable, and delicious. I will see you next time. Bye-bye now.